This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to solve geometry proofs, uh, actually how to do the proofs entirely. Uh, make sure you check out our last video. We had a video on beginning level, so how to start proofs and so on. All right, well this proof is going to be a little bit more difficult um, because, well, you can see here, I'm giving you the proof uh, in other words, what it is, the uh, basically the ultimate goal of this proof. So we have to use this given information, this um, the fact that we've got a rectangle over here, and we'll use the fact that we've got a diagram, and we'll try to prove that there's two triangles congruent in this picture. All right, but just like we saw before in the other videos, we have statements on the left, reasons on the right. Our reasons uh, have to... Uh, be based on previous knowledge and they're going to justify our new statements. All right, well, let's start. Well, we knew from our last uh, video that we put our given information here. Well, we've got a rectangle, so I'm going to put down rectangle uh, W, X, Y, Z. All right, so we know we've got a rectangle and uh, we put that down. What's our reason? We say it is given information. All right, so we've got ourselves a rectangle. We're good. Well, we're going to use the properties of rectangles to proceed. Um, I guess the first thing we should uh, you know, use, and this is the first thing I'm going to use, is that we do have right angles. Now, this is where it's kind of helpful to see where it is we're trying to go. We're trying to prove that this triangle here, on the left side, right, it's X, W, Z, so this triangle right here is going to be congruent to the triangle on the bottom right, which is Y, Z, W. We're going to tr prove these overlapping triangles are congruent. So I don't really care about much else, like this segment of the diagram, I don't really care about. I just want to figure out what properties of a rectangle I could use that relate to this triangle and this triangle. Well, one that I can see right away is the fact that we've got a right angle. And we've got another right angle. As a matter of fact, we know if this is a rectangle, we know all four corners are rectangles. I could mention that in the proof. I'm just going to mention that these two are right, even though we know all four are right, <clears throat> because those are the only two angles that are in the triangles I want to talk about. So I'm going to say that angle XWZ is a right angle. Okay, I'm just going to put the symbol here for right angle. Um, let me do that a little bit neater. It's a right angle. And what's my reason? I'm going to be using the definition of rectangle. Or maybe I could say the properties of a rectangle. Um, we know the definition of a rectangle is a quadrilateral that's equiangular and opposite sides are equal. Uh, but the definition or properties of a rectangle we put there it depends on how picky the instructor is. Depends on how you would have to word that. Uh, okay, so now let's uh, put down the other angle, Y Z W. So Y Z W is a right angle. What's the reason? Same as the one above it. We're using the definition or properties of a rectangle. All right, so we've got that. We've got those two pieces of information. Well, we also know that there are some sides congruent. Uh, we know that opposite sides are congruent. So I know that this segment is congruent to this segment. And that is the property of a rectangle, so I'm going to mention that in my proof also. I'm going to say, uh, let's see, WX, segment WX is congruent to segment YZ. Y, definition or properties of rectangle. All right, we were trying to prove these two triangles congruent. I'm going to do one more thing here, um, and this is uh, the reflexive property. I could always say that a segment right here, this segment WZ, 
we could say that that segment is congruent to itself. That is the reflexive property. So I'm going to say WZ is congruent to WZ. And yes, these are segments. Put a little segment symbol above it. And I would say that's the reflexive property. <clears throat> we could say that all segments, all angles, all angles are congruent to themselves. Now, if you really look closely at these two overlapping uh, triangles, we could see that they are now congruent, and I'm going to prove to you why they are congruent. I'm going to say that triangle XWZ is congruent to triangle YZW. All right, so we would say they're congruent. Now, you could kind of postulate yourself here if you're kind of looking at these triangles, which triangle uh, congruence statement you would use. Is it side, side, side? Is it side, angle, side? Is it angle, side, angle? Um, angle, angle, side, or HL? Well, these are right angles. And these are right triangles, but I don't have hypotenuse as congruent, so it's not HL. I don't have three sides congruent. It's not side, side, side. I don't have two angles within one triangle congruent to two angles in another triangle. So it's not angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. It only leaves side, angle, side. And that is my reason. I'd say it's side, angle, side. We got two sides and the angle between them. And there you have it. I've just proven that this statement is indeed uh, provable, and we did it. And uh, just take a look at how this, you know, problem went through. We put statements over here, and we base them on things we already know, like it was given information. How did I know this angle was a right angle? It's definition of rectangle, right? Definition of rectangle. So it always goes back to what you already know. And this reflexive property right there, side angle side, you have that. All right, here's problem two. Uh, what I want to do is um, do a problem without doing a two-column proof, but still show you the uh, process. Cause sometimes it takes too long to do the proof, and I want to make sure I squeeze in another problem here. All right, let's say we were given that this is an isosceles triangle. So I know that these are the two legs, and this is our base down here. Uh, let's say that we know that XZ, the segment XZ, is an angle bisector. All right, so let's say we know that X z is an angle bisector bisector all right so let's say this is all given information i'll put a little g there so we know that it's given and this is a segment all right so i'm going to kind of show you what we would do if we were doing a proof like this um, by the way what i'm going to do is prove a variety of things here just to show you how it works okay remember it's an isosceles triangle and this is an angle bisector. All right, so I'm going to continue. If it's an angle bisector, then I know that these two angles have to be congruent. That's the definition of what bisect means. If you bisect an angle, you get two smaller half size angles. All right, so that would be a row in my proof. All right, next I would say that by the reflexive property, that's my reason, uh, that XZ is congruent to itself. XZ is congruent to XZ. My reason, reflexive property. All right. Now I could say that these two triangles are congruent. Why are those two uh, triangles congruent? Well, because um, I've got side, angle, side, right? Side, angle, side is the reason I would say that that triangle is going to be congruent to that triangle. Okay, so those two triangles are now congruent to each other. Um, all right, now that I've got two triangles that are congruent, I'm going to put everything now in yellow that's after, uh, actually let's put it in little baby blue. Now that these two triangles are congruent, I could say that, I could say that this segment is congruent to this segment because they're corresponding parts of congruent triangles. All right, so that segment's congruent to that segment, that's a statement, and my reason is CPCTC, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So now I know that this angle bisector really ultimately 
creates a bisector of the opposite side. I could say that z, or actually I could say that xz bisects side wy. And that would be a statement. And my reason is uh, definition of bisect. I got these two segments congruent. Therefore, this z must be the midpoint. And xz passes through the midpoint. Therefore, xz bas uh, bisects the side. I could also prove that this angle is congruent to this angle. Why? CPCTC again. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Actually, I should do this in double arcs, not to confuse them with those. Hey, but wait, they're also got to be supplementary. Why? Because these angles actually make a straight angle. If two angles make a straight angle, they are supplementary. Okay, so I know that those two have to be congruent. And uh, if they're congruent and they're supplementary, then I also know that they're right angles. If two angles, and this is my reason, if two angles are congruent and they're supplementary, they have to be right angles. They both have to be 90 degrees. So I could say that if you, well, oh, by the way, you can see now I have two right triangles. So if you start with a tr uh, isosceles triangle and you have an angle bisector, it not only is an angle bisector, it's a median, right? It bisects the side opposite. It's a median. Um, it's a perpendicular bisector. I could say that this is now a perpendicular bisector by definition of perpendicular bisector. So it's a lot of things. When you start with an isosceles triangle and you bisect it, the angle here, it turns out to be this, this segment, XZ, turns out to be a lot of things. So that kind of shows you the process and how you would do uh, a problem without actually writing it down, but doing it step by step. All right, so that's just an example. I gave you kind of two ideas, two different problems, that is. Showed you how to do it. Make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our, our lessons, our interactive quizzes, videos, and activities. Take care.